My name is Nazar, and I'm the founder of a company called Lametric. Actually, it's a startup now, uh, but we are trying to be a success successful product company uh, built in Lviv. Uh, I have a service background as well, so several years ago I was completely in service business. Um, uh, and But for the three years now, I'm uh, uh, I'm full time in product, right? Uh, so, uh, several words. Uh, what we do now? So, we created a product. It called Lometric Time. Uh, potentially, you have Apple Watch, Pebbles on your wrist, and we do Pebble for home and office. So, we did it uh, from the scratch in Lviv. It has unique industrial design. Uh, it completely designed in Lviv by our in-house team, so we uh, didn't outsource anything. And uh, so several years ago, uh, we felt a need of a device that brings information for families, teams, and customers. So uh, if you remember that time, it was only Ego devices in this period, like uh, smartphones, smartwatches, and they were focused only on one personality. And we felt a need that um, information, in some, some information, some common information, should be delivered to a group of people together, to feel something together. And our devices uh, now in the world uh, uh, track uh, smart home notifications at homes. Uh, they are in the offices and track incomes and motivate team uh, to reach new goals, uh, to reach new sales goals, for example. And uh, also our devices uh, are in the local businesses and they show a trust level of business to the customers, engage them and uh, uh, so increase uh, the customer base of the business. Uh, potentially, you know Amazon Echo now. Amazon Echo is our, uh, let's say, competitor. It's the same device in the same category, but uh, the interaction is not uh, as in our case. It's, you install apps on the clock. Uh, it's, uh, it's made by voice, right? But the principle in the product is the same. It delivers a common information to the group of people at home, right? You ask what is the weather, you ask what is the time, and Alexa told you, and told not only for you, but for the whole uh, family. Uh, so, uh, I, want, I want to share today our story and uh, principles that helped us to reach some results. So, uh, one moment. Do, 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 do. So, uh, on this slide you can, see, you can see our story. So we started three years ago. As I said, we were a service company called Lemberg. And we uh, decided to incubate product uh, in, uh, to make a spin-off, right? A product spin-off. And it was three years ago we started to, uh, we had this idea, we started to prototype. And uh, after a year of uh, prototypes, we launched a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, we were quite successful. We raised around $400,000. Uh, then uh, we uh, built a product with a famous Foxconn that built devices for Apple. And uh, after a year of development, we delivered thousands of devices, thousands of devices across the globe, and uh, around 70% of devices are active right now across the globe, and they, uh, they are located in different offices, homes, and it's a quite good indicator because most of products are not used after they are bought, right? And uh, for us it's a good thing that most of devices are still used, and it's a majority of the devices. And uh, this year we got a Red Dot Award uh, for the reinvention of table clock. And now we are trying to make a company successful, increase sales, and uh, 
uh, move uh, forward, right? Uh, so we, we would like to sell more, uh, go to the offline sales, etc. So we got some success. We are not yet a successful uh, company, but we are trying to, uh, to be. And I would like to share some insights with you, what principles helped us uh, to get such result uh, uh, as we did. So as I said, uh, the all team members had service experience uh, before we started three years ago. Uh, what we did, first of all, we decided to make a separate physical space for the product team. Why, why it's important? Uh, it's very important because uh, service business is over, um, overloaded with engineers. And uh, when you build a product, you need uh, a little bit different uh, corporate culture and uh, ecosystem. Uh, to make it successful. Uh, first of all, uh, product people should be obsessed about the customer, right? In service companies, people are obsessed about technology. Uh, in product company, you need to uh, know some one industry knowledge very deeply. And in service company, uh, uh, you, um, you are more focused on tech tools, right? And it's right. Uh, also, uh, in business models of the companies are different. So the service company is focused on more on hours. The product company is focused more on results, on value. And uh, we created such atmosphere. We took people and put them uh, in a in, in, in another physical space to have discussion about one industry with the marketers, etc. So we shared with our people all details. Marketing staff, packaging staff, uh, messaging, marketing messaging, sales strategy, etc. And it's very important because uh, people uh, should deeply understand uh, what they do, even engineers. <coughs> the next step when you have a team, you need to hire the right people uh, in your team, right? The, and first of all, uh, this team, uh, these people should fit your corporate culture. It's first of all. And uh, from my experience, uh, for early stage of the product, for early stage, it's very important to hire generalists, technical generalists. What it mean? It means that people are not obsessed about one technology. So I know this technology, I would like to, to do it uh, this way. So uh, it's very important for efficiently doing the product uh, to gather a team that uh, do not afraid uh, to build product on the technology that they do not understand. It, yes, it's, it, it, it won't be 90% uh, maybe high level quality, but it will be enough quality for the first version of the product. And it will be more efficiently, because you, with a small team, you can build the first version of your product. So uh, my recommendation is to gather generalists in the product team and it's not only about engineers, it's also about the uh, people in marketing because uh, you need to understand sales, you also need to deep dive into technical details because if you don't understand it, well, it, it won't be so, uh, so great outcomes later on. Uh, so you can select the, such people. Such people are in the service companies, by the way, and every company can find such people in, in a service company. They are more ambitious, they are generalists, uh, they are customer funds. When you have some debates on the project, such people are on the customer side. When you have a conflict on the project, such people are on the customer side. And such people are very good for product development. Uh, such people have good abstract thinking, 
they are uh, they are not thinking about low level technical details they uh, think about things more abstractly uh, they always do more than expected not enough but more than expected and again they solve problems with the tool that is more efficient for your product not beloved tool potentially in your experience you found the guys that say I will do it only on jQuery or I will do it only on Java or I will do it only on uh, PHP uh, or something like this because people are fans of technology so for product development you need generalists that are not fans of technology <clears throat> they should have a special attitude to the product w what it means it means that people should care about this industry about the problem of this industry uh, f uh, so uh, people are different right and project in service are different from different industries so if you gather a team uh, which should make a healthcare project you need to care uh, you, you need to gather people uh, that think about healthcare problems they love this industry and uh, they would like to um, gain experience in exactly in this industry so uh, we gathered such team so on the photo you can see some of them and uh, these people uh, were generalists they were no specialists no professionals no no high uh, level professionals right but they had special attitude to the product to the industry uh, they they it's not about player a or player b these people are not player a's some some are but some player b but for product it doesn't matter you need uh, to have people that have special attitude uh, uh, for this product and they will they will become a champion team as an act okay you uh, gathered a people right uh, what uh, what's, what's that you need you need to balance your team uh, with a different visions if you gather a people only from engineers you will have only engineering vision of the product if you gather a people uh, with the art vision, uh, Matt Good said that I, I, I'm not calling it design. No, no, no design. It's not design. It's art, right? So I'm uh, I'm I'm put here industrial design. I'm put here uh, Photoshop UI, etc. Art, all right. And you need to have a people with a product vision. You you, you should have it balanced. But the most important is a product vision, and all these people, engineers, okay, UI designers, should, should, have, should learn product vision. Because product vision is focused on the benefits for the, uh, for the clients. In my experience, I found that engineers, it, it's very hard for engineers to understand the difference between the benefit and the feature. It's really, really hard. To understand this, this person should think very deeply about the industry where the product is. And to understand what benefits. For example, for a clock, right? You see this? Engineer will say that it is an icon, right? It's, it's, it's an icon, right? But for people, for human being, it's a clock face. It's a clock face, right? You can make a product unique creating your clock face like on Apple watch like on pebble you create your personal watch face and it it can be a driver of your sales the most important driver of your sales but for engineers it will be just icon for your clients it's a clock face it makes a clock different or unique uh, so it's very important to balance the team with such people and uh, also very important uh, that product vision have limited resource uh, resource feeling what it what I mean when you build a product you have limited resources and engineers 
they like engineering. <laughs> they don't care about um, resources in most of times. Uh, in most of cases, they like engineering and they will, uh, they will motivate uh, product leaders, let's do this feature, let's do that feature. But this feature cannot be so important for the product right now and it's not important to spend resources on it. The same about UI designers. Let's do this form uh, more, more, more nice, more awesome, etc. But it could be not important at, at this stage. So that's why it's very important to learn product vision by all uh, product members. And this vision adds different things to a product. Uh, so UI people, they give a heart to a product. Uh, engineers, they build a skeleton of your product. If you, if you pass all, um, uh, uh, if your team will be overbalanced with engineers, you will get product for all people in the world. <laughs> but the problem is that you should target your, your product on some target audience. And product vision, it gives a face to your product. It gives a face and target your product um, on, on, on some audience, right? It, it gives human being characteristics. For example, your product is from, uh, for men from 35 to 54 years old. And such people have different needs than people from 25 to 35, for example, right? But from engineering perspective, it's the same. That's why, that's why all should learn product vision and give a priority, right, to product vision. Uh, okay, you have your team balance set. Uh, after that, you need to share everything about the product with your team, everything, as I told. And everything starts from the mission of the company, from a vision, from, from the product strategy, marketing strategy, sales strategy, you constantly need to learn who is your customer with all your team. At the beginning of the product development, you have this information, but when you deliver it, you have this information, a little more, and you will more deeply understand who your customer is. You will uh, make a marketing messaging iterations uh, to target this audience and to sell more, right? Uh, so, you can combine your team uh, with a mission and sales because product, right, it's, you need to sell this product, you need to combine, uh, you can combine your team around these two things. For example, for our company, we have a mission to decorate home and business environment with intelligent objects and get bad people to natural information perception. So, and we start uh, from clock category at home and uh, building a company on the edge of consumer electronics and home decor industries. And uh, when you have some debates in your product team, uh, you can ask your uh, team, uh, you can justify uh, every solution by answering on two questions. Does it fit with our mission, first of all? And second, uh, does it increase sales? Is it have an impact on sales? Is it important to do this feature? And when you start thinking from that perspective, all your team members, you will easily understand what is important, what's not important now. And for example, if you're if you have not, uh, if you have analytics that 50% of your audience come from mobile devices and you have not mobile uh, version of your site, so it's priority, right? Because you lose 50% of your customers in sales funnel, right? So, and you can start thinking from sales, go deeply to every single feature and you will understand it's important or not. The next thing which is important when you're building a product is challenge your team. Uh, 
And it's very good for leaders to build a process to challenge the team constantly. So team should be constantly challenged uh, during the cycle of development. And uh, so it's very easy to do. In our cases, it was several times such situation. First of all, uh, we needed to, uh, to launch a Kickstarter campaign, right? It's a challenge. It's a challenge. We had a limited deadline, we had a limited budget, we, there are no exit strategy for product uh, team. No exit strategy. You cannot say, okay, bye-bye, <laughs> I, I cannot do it. So you, you need to say it to people before you put the challenge. And uh, best of all, it's take money, right? In our situation, it was Kickstarter campaign. We took money, we had a deadline, and we need to deliver. In a service business, it can be a contract. <laughs> you can accept contract even if you think it's not possible for your team to do. It's higher than team can have knowledge, right? Better to do that step. Better to try more to challenge your team. And sign a contract with a budget, have a deadline, and just do it. And uh, from our experience, people grow 10 times faster if they have this uh, circumstances. And uh, again, in our situation, we uh, have uh, preparation to Kickstarter campaign. <laughs> when we won Kickstarter campaign, we need to deliver. We took money and we need to deliver. And uh, now we need to grow our sales. Um, it's very important during development of the product accept conflicts and debates as part of the culture. Because you balanced your team with different visions, you will definitely have conflicts. Because engineering vision will say, I'm right, uh, product vision, I'm right, art vision, I'm right, and you always will have uh, um, uh, debates in your team, and you just need to accept it. And uh, make it a part of the culture in your company. And uh, so, don't be afraid to ask questions, be curious, ask a different question about the same thing. It's uh, especially very uh, funny, but we had such situation with uh, engineering, uh, because um, so sounds like a confident answer, but if you ask from different perspectives, you see that uh, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, um, it's not 100% correct, right? And so don't, don't be afraid to ask the same questions several times from different perspectives and then compare answers. If it uh, doesn't sound logical, um, escalate this problem and find a solution. It will save you a lot of time, a lot of money uh, during product development. Uh, for all, uh, all, only customer needs should be a judge in your conflicts, in your debates. But at the end of the day, someone uh, need to take a decision. And uh, so decision should be taken by a person who takes responsibility, and it's a product leader. Uh, but uh, it's very important to have in the culture, um, the culture of listening to the people. Uh, so all these visions, all, all these uh, concepts should be, should give value and should help uh, to select the best, uh, the best decision. Uh, interesting uh, principle about the user experience. So uh, it's very important to have in, in your team a choleric personality. You know there are different temperaments of people, right? And uh, so I advise you to select in your project a choleric. Uh, because uh, choleric people are not very patient uh, about something, when, when something doesn't work. <laughs> and for you as a product team, it's very important that someone, some people, uh, gives you feedback about the product as fast as possible. And choleric personality uh, will give you this feedback uh, very fast. So you just need to give the product 
uh, to, to such people, to such person, and it will say you it, it's too long, it's it looks ugly, and because because it, it it's impassioned, uh, this person is uh, uh, impassioned, right? So uh, it's uh, we call it uh, choleric choleric UX approach, right? And uh, so uh, from our experience it works and it will save also a lot of time on iterations. Um, another uh, good principle in product development is uh, frugality. And uh, so in all your decisions uh, you need to uh, keep this principle uh, because again engineers love engineering love engineering and they will build new feature and new feature and new feature but is this needed for the product? The same about UI designers. They will design, they like, uh, they like to design interfaces, etc. But is it really needed for the product? You, you need to ask these questions. Potentially, we do not need to develop ourselves. We need to buy a software as a service solutions. In our situations, we did it several times. For example, when we, we needed e-commerce, right, to sell product via online channel and so do we need to develop our own store or we just buy a Shopify account? So uh, you will get different answers. Engineering say we need to develop, uh, product uh, owners or marketers say it's better to, uh, to save money. So uh, it's, it's very nice to uh, train your people frugality in all decisions especially on the early stage of the product when you have very limited resources to get the goal. Uh, we have the same situation with the support system, we have the same situation uh, with controlling money systems as existing on the market and just bought an account. Um, another good principle in product development is uh, simplify, in invent and simplify. So uh, it means that uh, so when you build some innovation, it will be very complex. It's a natural process. Uh, when people start thinking about uh, something new, the first outcomes, they are very ugly and uh, very complex. And, uh, but when you iterate, when you think about it more and more time and iterate, continuously iterate, you get a simple solution. And the problem is that in the world, a lot of companies don't make last iterations. But, but the good thing is that the last iteration of your innovation process make all your product. We had this situation several times during development metric time. Uh, for example, with top buttons, you see it was a lot of them. Now we have three buttons, just right application, left application, and action button at the top. Uh, we had the same situation with a uh, rear part of the product. So we had uh, a lot of sockets, uh, a rear cup that was lost by users um, because it was badly connected uh, to the casing. And now we have more, uh, more nicer and more um, better solution from user experience. The same with all our prototypes. It's only three here, right? But it was around 20. And the first prototype looks like Frankenstein, but it does its job. We, we could stop our development on this stage and uh, give people this Frankenstein, right? Uh, but we go further. And then, then it was okay, it had a casing, but it was ugly, etc., etc. And now we have what we have. Uh, by the way, the funny uh, story about the last such situation is about the coating of the product. Uh, almost two days before mass production, we selected the coating that is more resistant to the uh, fingerprints. Uh, before this, we had a coating that, is, um, uh, that leaves fingerprints more uh, on the surface. And, uh, why we found the solutions? We had a conflict with, uh, with our supplier. We asked, it, it's part of our culture. We wanted to make it and uh, we asked, asked our supplier and they found, two days before mass production, they found the coating that makes the job. 
Uh, another uh, important uh, principle is, uh, so uh, leaders of the product team should be in this same physical uh, space uh, with all members, and they should share a challenge on the same level as all members. So we, in our team, we have three co-founders, and all of them works uh, with the same pace as all team members. One of my co-founder is Igor. He uh, he was in China for one year. It's incredible. I was there for one month, and you know, it was hard to be honest. And he was already one year. Now he is making second batch of the product, and he is already uh, two months or three months in China. And control vision, control product vision. And uh, so I uh, Dmitro, he shared the nights in Lviv office with me and built awesome software with the team that drives this product. So I'm, uh, I'm very proud of them. Uh, the next principle that works, it's again, everyone should be curious and deep dive into a problem. And don't afraid, ask foolish questions. It, it could, it could, because you are not expert, right? Uh, for example, marketer, uh, marketer personality, it, it can be not expert uh, in engineering. But if such person has question, he could ask, and it could sound like a foolish question, uh, but, uh, but it makes a job. It gives a problem as a perspective of you, uh, from not technical perspective. Uh, so it was a question to the Chris uh, what uh, important uh, for people uh, to, to develop, uh, to understand product development more. So my advice is to forget about engineering for some people. Forget about engineering for, for some years. Don't be fans of engineering. Start be fans of marketing. For example, and when when you forget it, you will have other perspective on your product, and in the product team, you will add uh, value with other thoughts and other um, uh, with other vision, and uh, when you will have this conflict of different visions, you will get the right the truth, the right answer, and so I understand the. Now, stay foolish, stay hungry. Stay foolish means uh, that you don't be afraid of foolish questions. You, you, need, you just need to be curious and ask. And after that, you should be hungry for the answers from people. So you should don't end meeting uh, to the moment when you have not answered. You just, you just need to find an answer. So stay hungry for the answers. Uh, <clears throat> for sure, your product team, it's, uh, they are not experts in all, uh, in all things, and it's definitely true. And it's very important for us was to involve a service knowledge and uh, service expertise. In our story, uh, we have a software expertise from the Lemberg, from our mother company, and also we were lucky uh, to get expertise from Foxconn in a uh, hardware port, uh, part of you, uh, part of the product. So they helped us understand mechanical design. So we are very uh, thankful to them, for example, to design our, our industrial design in a way that it's very easy for assembling. Uh, they have enormous amount of knowledge in this, and now uh, we can, uh, the assembling process of uh, our product is very easy and it's because of their knowledge. So it's important to involve experts uh, definitely for the niche answers, for the niche problems where you uh, don't have any experience. So we involve it, uh, Lemberg and Foxconn. Uh, but in the same time, you need to delegate something only when you understand. Uh, what it means? It means that uh, you, you need to, uh, on, on some high level, to understand things uh, 
So even in the mechanical design, you need to understand the basics. And uh, when you understand this, uh, you can put um, limitations for the suppliers, vendors, organizations, and they should meet them. And when you understand the process, uh, you will put as much limitations as possible and your vendor uh, will try to meet them. So my uh, advice is to um, understand what you delegate. F from, from this uh, point of view, we sent one of the co-founders to the Foxconn for one year just to control vision. Just to control vision. Just to have the outcomes that we have in the office. It, it, it's very experienced people, but in the same time, you need to have closely a person who understand, fully understand a vision of your product and pass it vision to your supplier. So, thank you very much. <laughs> any, any question?